Welcome to another video. I am the Starman and I'm here in Blackpool. In fact, I'm stood in the middle of a field next to Stanley Park in Blackpool. And the reason why I've come here is because I want to use my camera here, which has got a 300 millimeter telephoto lens. It's a Nikon D850 camera, full frame camera. And what I want to do is I want to see if I can photograph the planet Jupiter and maybe the planet Saturn as well and see what we can get with a lens like this. Now, if you want to photograph the planets properly, if you want to get detail on the planets, you really need to use a telescope and a specialist camera, astronomy camera, like, um, like a, a modified webcam, something like that with a small sensor. But I want to see what I can get with this setup, a regular setup like most people will have. Now, I will come on to the astronomy camera and telescope at a later date. I'll do a video on that. And I might even do a video on capturing the planets using a mobile phone down a telescope lens. But for this video, let's see what we can get with my camera. Like I say, it's a Nikon D850 with a 300 millimeter lens. And if it's not long enough, to get any detail on the planets or anything. We'll certainly get the moons of Jupiter, but will we get any detail on Jupiter? That's the thing. Could we capture the rings of Saturn with this setup? Well, we'll have to find out, won't we? But I do have a two times converter, which I can use. And I will put the, take a picture first with the 300 millimeter lens. And if I struggle to get any detail on the planets for that, I'll stick my two times converter on and we'll see how we go. Anyway, I want to show you around where I am now, just to give you an idea of where Jupiter and Saturn are, and then I'll start shooting them. Okay, so I'll just show you around. Can you see Blackpool Tower over there? Doesn't it look amazing? And you might be able to see those uh, searchlights in the air. So like I say, I'm in a, a field here at the moment. That's looking over Stanley Park. But I want to show you where the planets are. That's looking towards the roughly towards the west and now i'm panning around and looking towards the south now as we look up here we should be able to see a dot in the sky can you see that it's around about a quarter of the way up the sky there roughly towards the south I'm filming this at about nine o'clock in the evening and look over here now. Can you see this way? We're looking roughly towards the east, sort of east, southeast. And can you see up there? That is Jupiter, the king of planets. Look at that. And now I'm going to see if I can try and photograph it and see if we can see those moons and maybe even get some detail on it. Right, okay, so my camera is now pointing towards the planet Jupiter. I've aimed it up towards the planet there. And what I want to do is, the first thing I want to do is to capture a picture of Jupiter and see if we can capture those moons. Now, all the moons are on show. We've got Callisto and Ganymede on the left-hand side of the planet, and we've got the smaller moons, Io and Europa, on the right-hand side. And it's pretty easy to capture the moons with this setup. So that's what I'm going to do first. So... I need to focus on the planet. If you have a look at the screen here, can you see how we've got a blob there in the middle of that red box? Well, that is actually Jupiter. So what I need to do is I'm going to grab hold of the ring on the lens and I'm going to manually focus that until Jupiter becomes like a little dot. Can you see that? I'll just make it a bit bigger. It's not that easy. Oh, can you see that? We can see the moons now. That looks amazing. I'll just go in and out of focus just to get it right. I think that we've got it there now, folks. Okay, so now I've got the camera focused on Jupiter. We can see those moons on the screen. That means they're all in focus. If they're not in focus, they disappear. So now that everything's in focus, I'm going to take a picture and I'm going to have to, I'm going to, have to experiment here with the exposure. I'm going to take a picture 1 25th of a second. I'm using base ISO. In fact, I'll go to 200 ISO. 1 25th of a second. And we'll see how that does. Okay, so I've just taken a picture of the planet and the moons now. I'll put that on the screen now. Check this out. This is Jupiter 
and all of its four moons. Can you see those there? Those are the four Galilean moons that Galileo discovered. Four of the brightest moons of Jupiter. It's got a lot more moons than you can see here. So we've got Ganymede and Callisto on the left there, a bit further out, and very close to the planet are Io and Europa. Now you'll notice that the planet is very, very blown out. This is what you have to do to get the moons. You have to use a fairly long exposure. I was using 125th I'm using the lens wide open f4 and the ISO on that was 200 so it's a relatively long exposure 125th of a second but what I want to do now is I want to see if I can actually get any kind of detail on the planet itself now it's going to be a little speck on the sensor because this is a full frame sensor and I did mention that if you want to photograph planets properly you need to use like a dedicated webcam uh, astronomy camera something like that and the telescope but let's see what we can do with this shall we see if we can get any detail on Jupiter itself I'm going to have to shorten the exposure quite considerably I could be using something like one one thousandth of a second because the planet is really bright and we don't want to overexpose it Right, so that was a pretty good picture of Jupiter and all the four moons. It's not that difficult to do. You can have a go at it yourself on a tripod. Shortest exposure, you want to bring out those moons, but at the same time, the planet overexposes. So can we get a picture of Jupiter and pick up any kind of detail at all on the planet itself? I'm going to have to shorten the exposure quite considerably. I'm going to use something like one one thousandth of a second it's going to take that kind of exposure i'm also going to stop the lens down a little bit to f5.6 which will might just sharpen it up a little bit and we'll see how that does shall we let's see i'll put that on the screen now for you oh look at this can you see that we've actually got a disc you can actually see the disc of jupiter that is absolutely amazing doesn't that look amazing? We've actually got it. And I think that, I'm not sure if this will come through on the TV, but I can actually see a little bit of a hint of those equatorial belts. You know, those red rings that go around the planet just above and below the equator. I think we've just about got them on that picture. But I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Okay, so I think we did pretty well there to get the disk of the planet, the actual disk of Jupiter, and a very merest hint of detail on those equatorial belts, although saying that, it's still a bit of a blob. So I'm going to stick my two times converter on to make this into a 600 millimeter lens, and let's see if this helps us to get a bit more detail on the planet. Okay, here we go, put the converter on. Oh, oh no, this is not good. Oh no, my lens is falling off. Oh no, I need help, I need help. <laughs> oh no, the lens is falling off. What happened there then? You know why? I bet I did that knob. I bet I unloosened it. Because it's easy to do that when you're doing this. I bet I loosened it. I'm going to have to focus again now. Uh, so we're at f5.6. We're now at f11, which is f8, two stops, we've lost two stops. So instead of 1,250, I need to be at uh, 1,640. I need to be at 1,320, don't I? Right, okay, so I've just put the converter on, and I'm going to take another picture now. I need to take into account that the converter takes away two stops of light gathering from the from the lens. So instead of 1,250th of exposure, I need to go down to, uh, to 1 640th and double the ISO. I don't want to go too slow with the shutter speed because there's a bit of wind and it's going to wobble around all over the place. Okay, so let's take a picture of that now and see how that looks. Will it look any better than the other one? We'll be a little bit closer. The disc will certainly look bigger. Check this out now on your screen now. What do you think to this? It looks very small. It looks lost on the full frame. Can you see how tiny Jupiter looks? Well, let's have a look if we zoom in a little bit. Can we see any kind of detail on the planet itself? You know, I, I can actually see detail on my camera screen. I can see evidence of those equatorial belts. I'm not sure if they're going to come through on this video on your TV screen, but I can certainly see them. So I don't think we've done too bad there with Jupiter. We've managed to capture the moons of Jupiter quite easily. No, no problem at all there. You'll do that yourself, no problem, as long as you follow what I did there. But capturing detail on the planet with a full frame camera and um, 
a fairly short telephoto lens is a little bit it's it's limited it's uh you really do need to use an astronomical telescope and a specialist camera if you want to do that sort of thing properly but anyway towards the south at the moment is the planet saturn and as you know saturn has these the amazing rings and can we capture the rings of saturn using the same technique that i did for jupiter let's have a go shall we i can definitely see the uh, the oval shape of saturn oh look at this oh oh my goodness look at that oh wow look at that Oh my goodness. Oh no, it's gone out of focus. Oh my God, I've got bloody touchscreen focus on the bloody camera. Get off. Oh God, it just sent it right out of focus then. God, why was that on? Okay, so we're just trying to focus on Saturn now. I'm just focusing on this star nearby. Or is it the moon? Titan, it could be, you know, Saturn's brightest moon. I'm just trying to get that into focus so that we can then take a picture of the planet. It's just moving off there. Yeah, so I've now got the camera focused on Saturn using this, what I believe is the moon, Titan, just to the side of it. There's the planet Saturn there. Can you see that speck there? I'm going to zoom into that now. I'm going to set the camera up on, on that. And first of all, what I'll do is I'll take a fairly long exposure, which will blow out the planet. So I'm, I'm still using the two times converter. I've still got that on. So we're out at F11 here. It's quite a um, slow aperture that. I'm going to give it some sort of, well, let's see. It's maybe one tenth, shall we? Let's try this, shall we? Uh, it's gone, it's not there, it's gone behind the <laughs> cloud. <laughs> You're going to have to stop the filming into it again. Right, here we go, so there's Saturn there. Let's take a picture, one tenth. Fairly slow shutter speed, we've got a speck on the screen. We can, oh, look at that. Oh my goodness, look at that. Doesn't that look absolutely Amazing. I can I don't know how it comes through on the TV, but on my screen you can clearly see the rings of Saturn. That looks amazing. And I think I've actually overexposed that a little bit. So what I'll do is I will if I I'll leave the ISO where it is. I'll that was one tenth of a second. So I think if I maybe go to one sixtieth and try another picture there, let's try that, shall we? So we're giving it quite a bit less exposure. Let's see how this looks. But wasn't that amazing? You could clearly see the rings. I think we've got a result there, folks. Oh my goodness, look, that's better. I think that is better now, folks. I'll put that on the screen for you. Look at that. Oh, wow. That is amazing. That's Saturn, folks, the ring planet. Isn't it amazing? Yeah, there you go. What a result that was, eh? Amazing, we photographed Jupiter, we got the moon, and we also got a hint of detail on the planet itself, although I think the seeing conditions tonight are not that great. I think I can do better than that. I then turned the camera towards Saturn, and we had a go at that, and I think we did an amazing job on Saturn, actually, to be able to resolve the rings with a fairly, you know, moderate setup like what I've got, albeit my camera does have 46 megapixels, which still, makes up for the planet being so small but the planet is tiny 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 on such a full frame sensor in the future i will use one of those specialist cameras on a telescope and we'll see the results we can get with something like that but i think for now i think we've done pretty well and if you get a chance to go out and have a go at shooting the planets yourself have a go at jupiter see if you can capture the moons and then maybe if, you, if you're successful with that turn your camera towards Saturn and see if you can capture that amazing ring system like I did tonight. Absolutely amazing. Anyway, I hope you liked this video. If you do, hit the like button and also hit subscribe and tick the bell for notifications of new videos. And I will see you again on the next one.